This is Dr. Holt. In this video, I want to work this problem here. I have a 3.63 kilogram block. It's sitting on a frictional surface here. The block has moved down 14.1 centimeters. It's attached over a massless pulley. The spring constant here is 83 newtons per meter. And what we want to do, we want to find out what the coefficient of friction is going to be here once the block has moved the 14.1 centimeters. And I'm going to prove that I, this answer is correct here. All right, when you're faced with a problem like that, is first thing you want to do is recognize first it's going to be a, an energy type problem. And I usually like to establish where the axes are going to be, which is going to help me do the uh, gravitational potential. So this will be my final position. So I will draw an object right through there, straight line and the starting point will be somewhere into here. Now we will be using this distance right here as the height and calculating the changes in gravitational potential energy and that value is going to be H. Now when you calculate H in this case, H is going to be the 14.1 times the sine of this angle, that will give me the distance here. And you can make yourself a triangle to do that. So I'm going to change it back to meters, going to be dealing with meters, so that's going to be equal to 0.141 times the sine of 36.1. All right, now I'd like to determine whether I want to take my gravitational potential from this line or this line. I'm going to take this line here, so I'm going to color that a different color for you. I'll just make that into red. And I'm going to be doing all my calculations there. And I usually like to call that my neutral axis in regards to the gravitational potential. All right, I come down now and I usually write out all my equations. And I'm going to start out with my potential energy, gravitation at one, plus the potential energy at spring at 1, plus the kinetic energy at 1, plus the work done by non-concerted forces is equal to the potential energy gravitation 2, plus the potential energy of the spring at 2, plus the kinetic energy I have at 2. Now again, I'm, I'm writing all this out. S several of these are going to go to zero. We're going to determine that right now. If I read the problem very carefully, it says the block is released from rest and it, when it moves down the incline bef before coming to rest. If, if it's rest, I don't care if I have velocity in between here. I care about where I started from and where I, where I finished up at. So in this case, all my kinetic energies are going to go to zero because I have no velocity. All right, if the object starts here, we'll call this position one, and this is my position two. I should have done that in the beginning. I hope I didn't confuse you there. If I start at position one, and I'm taking all my, gra my gravitational potential relative to this red line, then this is going to exist. If, however, if this object is up here, the spring has not extended at all, so this is going to go to zero here. When I get down to the bottom, again, I'm taking everything relative here. I'm going to have no gravitational potential because I have no height above this red line when I'm at the final position. So I'm down to just this equation right here. And I'll write that down. I'll be dealing with strictly this. The potential energy, gravitation at 1, plus the work done by non-concerted forces must equal to the potential energy of the spring at 2. Now to calculate the potential energy of gravity in respect of 1 in respect to the line at position 2, we're going to do m times g times h. Now my mass is going to be given as 3.63 kilograms. So I'll put 3.63 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times my height. And again, my height is going to be this value here, 0 0.141 meters times the sine of 36.1 degrees. 
Okay, and then I'm right now I'm just going to put work done my non-conserved day, and we're going to come back and calculate that. And then I'm going to write that equal to my spring potential, and that's going to be one half kx squared. So that's going to be one half. My k value here is 83 newtons per meter. Okay, my deflection the spring. If I'm moving this thing down 14.1 centimeters, this must be extended 14.1 centimeters. We'll put that in in terms of meters. So 0 0.141 meters, and please make sure you square that because it's one half kx squared. All right, now let's talk about the work done by non-conservative forces. To do that, you need to find your frictional force. Now, I'm going to draw a quick free body diagram of the 3.63 kilogram mass. And again, I typically do it some, somewhat different than some uh, instructors do. I like to drape my gravity first and break it into components. I just think it makes more sense before I add it to my free body diagram. So this will be my right angle here. This will be the force of gravity right here. So the force of gravity is going to equal to the mass of the object, which is 3.63 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That will give my units in newtons. And I'll use a calculator right now to do that. And that's going to give me a value of 35.574 newtons. Now, the angle right here, this angle here, if you draw it exactly like I have here, if that angle is 36.1, this angle here will be 36.1. And again, you can do a little bit of geometry and prove that very quickly. So I'm looking for this value here. That value there is going to equal to 35.574 newtons times the cosine of 36.1 degrees. And that's going to give me a value of 28.743 newtons. All right, so now I'm going to do a free body diagram. And again, you can calculate this one. You don't need this because all I need to do, I'm looking for the work done by non-conservative. So when I draw my free body diagram, I will have force of gravity coming down this way. I will have my normal going back up this way. I will have a frictional force going back this way. And I will have some type of force going back this way. So now we know this is the force of gravity that is normal. And that's going to get it equal to, again, 28.743 newtons. This is going to be my normal force. This is the force the surface is pushing up on the block. And that's also going to be equal to 28.743 newtons. And the reason being, because I know this object is not going to accelerate, so forces must be balanced in this case. Okay, what I'm looking for is this guy right here. This is the force of kinetic friction. And that value is going to equal to 28.743 newtons times the coefficient of kinetic friction. All right. So if I know this value and I know this object is going to slide along a frictionless, excuse me, a frictional surface of 14.1 centimeters, then the so to calculate the work done by non-conservative force the work done by non-conservative force, and now since this is going this way and I'm moving 0 0.141 meters, it's going to be negative 28.743 mu of k times 0 0.141 meters. I'll put, again, that would be newtons right here. Meters, sorry, that, oh, let me change it, sorry, that's confusing you. It's 0 0.141 meters. All right, when I take that value of 28.743 times 0.141, I'm going to get work done of negative 4.053 times, and I'll, that would be joules. Let me do this. Joules times mu of k. So now we're going to go back up to the equation right here, and we're going to take out work done by non-conservative force. We're going to minus that, 
we're going to bring that value back in a 4.0453 joules mu of k. All right, I'm going to grab that and we're gonna, now we're going to solve this problem right here. Try to copy that just to save some time. I bring it down to here. And now all we have to do is solve for this value right here. All right, so we'll start working this problem on the left side. I'll go use calculator 3.63 times 9.8 times 0 0.141 times the sine of 36.1. Verify that one more time here. 0 0.141 times the sine of 36.1 times 3.63 times 9.8. Okay, and that's going to give me a value over here of 2953 Joules, and then I'm going to have minus this of 4.053 mu of k. Again, that's going to be in joules, is equal to, and we'll do the other side real quick 0.5 times 83 times 0 0.141 squared. Oh, 6 joules. Okay. I'm going to subtract this from the other side. Minus 2.9553. So now I'm down to here. Minus 4.053. I'm going to just drop the units just for a second. Is equal to negative 2.130. I will solve for mu of k. The negatives will cancel out. So u of k would equal to 2.130 divided by 4.053 do that and I get a value here of mu of k is going to equal to 0.5256 roughly and just to verify that is true 0.5256 and that basically matches that number there alright hope that video was useful Again, it's, the key to this is just establish uh, where you want your neutral axis, where you're going to take all your gravitational potential is, and then make sure when you do the work that you draw your, your free body diagram correct, and you're going to get your work done by non-conservative forces in terms of mu of k. All right, best of luck.